What you do next decides your own fate and the future of the world. What shall you do with divinity? And so it ended. A tale that began with my own ill-fated attempt to rid the world of the Godwoken. A new divine rose, a true heir to the Seven, more powerful than ever, and united Rivalon in its battle against the Void. All across the realm, he was loved, worshipped, and adored. Humans, lizards, elves, and dwarves all rallied to his banner. The Great Allegiance stood once more, but the war continued. From the depths of the Void, the God King still sought to return. As for me, I was freed of the God King's terrible tyranny. I avoided an eternity of pain and suffering. Now I fight for the other side. Now, I fight for the Divine. Well, well, look what the cat dragged in. A god, no less. He smiles at you fondly as he takes you by the hand. You've done us proud. You saved the world, didn't you? No. We were all of us instrumental. Only one walked away with divinity. I'm glad it was you. Oh, if you don't mind. After all, I've dragons to raise. I need to teach them to be good boys and girls before they set the entire world on fire. There may be an accident or two along the way. Please don't hold it against them. I do so long to see my palace again. The Forbidden City. The scents of spices and incense. The sound of sitars in far-off rooms. To sit all day in perfumed shade and watch the white of the marble change with the journey of the sun. But above all, I long to be with Sadha. Long to finally have the time to love. Oh, uh, but before you go, remember how when we first met, I took you by the jaw to inspect your teeth? So you did, you little firebrand, you. Now, if you recall, as per your own testimony, you've no culinary skills, you lack a sense of fashion, and you've little or no regard for personal hygiene. A damning assessment, if ever there was one. Still, I am nothing if not a tolerant man who believes in individual growth. I'm sure the journey taught you much. As such, I'd like to offer you what I denied you before, the opportunity to become my slave. What say you? Taken quite by surprise, he staggers back, blood dripping down his nostrils. I take that as a no, then. Fair enough. But next time, please, use your words. The malady stands tall and proud, sunlight sparkling off her mask. From here, she looks almost angelic. Well, here we are again. You, me, and the ship I've saved from ruin for your personal benefit. I'd say you owe me. But why stay the obvious? Let an eye fool your holiness. 
I expect it's the last we'll see of each other for some time. She turns to me, arms crossed, and grins. Look at you. Magnificent. Actually, I've never looked better, except for one small thing. She fingers the mask covering her face. For a moment, it seems as though she's about to remove it. But instead, she places a hand on your shoulder. We've come a long way together. I did my best by you all the way. I sacrificed much. I'd give even more to see you become exactly what you've become. Soon, I'd like to have a little chat about something you can do for me. But, I believe that can wait. Relax. Enjoy. I certainly plan to do the same. Oh, I don't know. Around and about. Treat myself to some mead, a level 300. I'd say we've earned it. And when the time comes, I'll come find you. Your holiness. You escaped an abominable prison and confronted the king of all gods, only in turn to confront divinity itself. A rather poetic arc, don't you think? Not that your story is finished, of course. Your divinity shines upon all who walk Rivalon. And there will be those that escape to the shadows. You must be ready to face them, whenever they might emerge. As a matter of fact, yes. Source makes for an excellent ally in matters of a demonic nature. Not only can Void seep through the Veil, but the beasts of Nemesis might similarly slip out of their own plane. Whether you are clever enough of a Divine to keep Damien's disciples confined to Nemesis, I can't say. But I think we'll know soon enough. And... I suggest you be ready. Now that I am clear of mind and free of intruders, I'm wondering if it isn't time to share my learnings with the less enlightened. And to that end, I have a few ideas worth considering. Once I've come to a conclusion, I promise you'll be the first to know. Until we meet again, The flaming hatchling bounces and cheeps out of sheer excitement. Daddy! Daddy! Look it! Look it! At me! It takes you a moment to realize the egg you've been carrying has hatched at long last. The chick trills contentedly and flaps its tiny feathers in recognition of its proud parent. It seems you've got a new mouth to feed. the new divine. That's so cool. What's it like? Neat! I'll be counting on you. There's also the matter of my payment for all the stuff I've done for you. That'll be... He taps his fingers and mouths silently while he counts, until he arrives at an acceptable figure. Thirteen hundred thousand dozen and fifty-teen gold pieces. Now pay up. Oh, yeah? What's that? Han ponders your suggestion for all of a second. Okay. I love being all sneaky and shh. Uh, well, yeah. But you better believe the bill for that will be a doozy. I've never been fond of what the Divine stands for, but I must say, it's rather exciting to say I've been up close and personal with one. 
reform my ways. <laughs> How adorable. No, I'm afraid I cannot escape who I am and what I've done. Her eyes flick down to your mouth. She smiles coyly, then slinks forward to kiss you. Her mouth meets yours and devours you with predatory abandon. Somewhere in the recesses of your mind, you think you hear her voice sigh, mine. But then the kiss ends. Something to remember me by, darling. Hmm. Who knows? A nice cottage someplace quiet from the Halley and I. A roaring fire and a feather bed. Maybe. Maybe. But a girl needs some fun, doesn't she? Beast Spirit smiles as you approach, and begins to sing a tune you think vaguely familiar. Here, here the wild beast just sails on the ocean, the cupboard can't hide you, not... He pauses, then continues to hum. Well, if it isn't the new divine gracing me with his presence, Honored I am. Tarquin's smirk wilts into a glow. I didn't come all this way to show deference. Some friendly advice. All who rise are capable of falling. Gods, the divine, anyone. Remember where you came from. The last thing this world needs is more tyrants. Is the question, isn't it? How does one top the greatest feat of necromancy ever conceived? I might have the answer to that. Tell me, have you ever heard of Gustafjan? No, of course you wouldn't. It's a written language, unreadable to most, but myself naturally. It comes from a mysterious race from another world, beings that feed on mine. I intend to seek them out. This Gustafjan seems to guard portals to their realm. But once I've uncovered one, well, why settle for being the greatest mind in just one world when there's another for the taking? Amazing I'm still here. That we're still here. That Lucian... Well... That relationship always was complicated, wasn't it? You're so much like him. My instincts tell me to kneel to the new divine. I've done so before, after all. But I can't drive myself to do it again. Gareth is still. For a moment, his mind wanders to memories of friends and enemies, of malady and magisters, of demons and divinity. He is then present once more, though hardly animated. Perhaps not. But time. Time has a way of changing someone. Lucian did not start as the man he became. You are now a guiding star. I can only ask you don't lead your people astray. Gareth's mind wanders once more. He is no longer engaged with you, but with a past he may never leave behind. I find a way to fit. I wasn't just content to lurk in Lucian's shadow. I was his shadow. Now I stand in the sun as my own man. I just don't know who that man is. And so I find out. My goal is to have a goal, if that makes sense at all. And if it doesn't, well, that's all I've got. Here we are, Quercus. This is it. What do you mean, Quercus? Of course I'm prepared. I have my noble steed below me and my trusted shield beside me. What more could I need? His whiskers crack into a mischievous smile. And 
I may have cracked the spell that will stop the great acorn in its furious tracks, if that's what you mean. That's right, Quirkus. We've done it! Sir Laura turns to you, his beady eyes shining with pride. I owe you an apology, she wrote. At the start of our journey, I wouldn't have believed a human would lead me to the discovery that would save us all. But I see now that my prejudice was foolish. Without you, Quirkus and I might still be stuck on that abominable prison. Now, here I am. Here we are, on the brink of saving the world. Indeed, Quirkus and I will find an advantageous location and do just that. Meanwhile, you must prevent the servants of the Acorn from interrupting us. Salora takes a slow, deep breath and lets it out in a rush. You feel it, don't you? It's so still. But there's something behind it, too, like a thunderclap waiting to fall. The great acorn is nearly here. Its servants are poised for impact. We've known this moment would come. Now it is time to put my research to the test. I am ready. Quirkus is ready. And you, S.H.I.E.L.D.? What say you, Quirkus? That's good enough for you. Then it's good enough for me, too. Salora grabs your pinky with his tiny paw. He gives it a decisive shake, then salutes. No matter what happens next, she did. There's something Quirkus and I want you to know. It has been an honor. Now, oh, onward! There you are. I was hoping you'd come find us again. I've never known a god before they became divine. I was curious if it would have changed you. She gives you a long, assessing look, but makes no immediate comment. Hmm. Sounds sort of promising. Isn't it odd, though, being a god? She chuckled. I'm sorry, it's just... There's something funny in it, isn't there? A prisoner one moment, a god the next. You must feel the difference. Don't you feel it? Maybe you should give it a bit of time. I imagine it takes almighty power a little while to settle in. I'll serve my people as best I can. I'm theirs now, and they are mine. Let's do good. You by yours, me by mine. Together. But... Oh my, you! Look who it is! Our brand new Lord and Savior! She curtsies low and looks up at you with a grin. What's your first order of business? End world hunger? Instigate world peace? Send all spiders back to hell where they belong? I don't know if anyone's free of anything, once and for all. But I'm bloody thrilled to be here now. Just me, myself, and you, of course. I'm not the next god. Someone made that abundantly clear. She winks and pokes you in the ribs. So? Come on, don't keep me in suspense. What are you going to do with your almighty power? Big job. I'd offer to help, but I've got some business of my own to attend to. Get loot, play loot, get loot, get glad. So, Chief, I guess this is it, right? Her face softens. You know, I won't forget you either. Not ever. 
It's not every day you fall in love with a future god, after all. You'll ace it. I'm sure of that. As she turns from you, the whites of her eyes darken, the veins in her face go grey, and a wicked smile curls her mouth. Suddenly, it's gone again. She winks, and you're left wondering whether you saw anything at all. See you around. There's nothing interesting now. The future lies above. It gives me almost as much pleasure to speak to you as it does to be whole again. I will always be an ally to those that carry swords, to those whose blood is of the heroes of old, and so, as always, I am at the ready. Consider me to be a gift from Malady. My wood was splintered, but my spirit intact. It was a great feat, but given her skill, not a surprising one. I feel better than you. You look out to the endless beyond. The sun's light plays upon the waves, just as it always do. The sails flutter in the wind, just as they always will. And yet, something is different. You are different. And with a start, you realize where you must go next. You speak the command to the Lady Vengeance, and another chapter begins. War raged on. Arx remained the center of power as the races united behind the Divine. But the Void Woken attacks continued as they did elsewhere. Arx would see many more long years of war. The ancient empire of lizards became one of the pillars of the new divine alliance. The houses of war and of shadows were particularly useful in the fight against the god king. The empire used the war to expand its territory. Justinia returned to her throne. Under her rule, the dwarven kingdom fought for the divine, and her loyalty was unquestionable. Many fine and courageous dwarves did their people great honor in battle and in death. With Lucian gone, the elves reluctantly rejoined the Divine Alliance. Their place in the War on the Void would entirely depend on the integrity of the new Divine. and on the integrity of the elven godwoken who did not ascend. And here and there, across the world, what was left of the Black Ring fought on. The island of Fort Joy remained a sorcerer's paradise, a place of exile for those whose sorcery threatened to bring in the void. For their well-being, its residents depended entirely on the benevolence of the new divine. Reaper's coast struggled on. The farms and the fisheries fought to feed the people against the void-woken blight. The black pits took fire. The oil there burns still. Driftwood teetered on the edge of starvation until the night the Void Woken came from the sea. All were killed. This did, however, put an end to the famine. The Nameless Isle had vanished. Although only open water remained, by instinct ships would steer clear. 
none of the captains could articulate why. Sir Gareth thanked the surviving Seekers for their service and gave them their freedom. Disillusioned with ongoing war, he set out alone to find a new purpose. He would never stop seeking. Young Han grew up a warrior and became one of the Alliance's greatest generals. But even he could not win the war. Almira and Mihaili settled in an abandoned homestead. The locals liked and respected Almira. She never wanted for help, and deals always fell to her favor. Outsiders were often suspicious, but no local would speak against her. With a new divine at the helm, Malady had a powerful ally, but she was in no hurry to call in her favor. After all, it might be the last thing she ever did. Having performed the greatest act of necromancy in history, Tarquin found the new world unchallenging. He became obsessed with rumors of another plane of existence. One day he vanished and was never seen again. Ahu the wizard served the new divine with honor, wisdom, and an at times unnerving feline elegance. The undead priestess Gratiana remained in her sanctuary, happy to wait for the war to pass. She was troubled only by the silence of her goddess. Jehan the demon hunter never stopped hunting for demons. Sahela sought to strengthen the Elven Alliance with the new divine. Her powers of sight proved useful in the ongoing war against the Void, but she could never be sure that the new divine trusted her. Tova, her mother, was Sahela's most trusted warrior. As the new mother, Sibyl found a great forest and founded a new elven homeland. Elves flocked to her and worshipped her as a goddess. Sibyl swore never to kill again, but once in a while she'd look at her needle and smile. On his return to the Empire, the Red Prince was hailed a hero. He married Sada and they had many more dragons. Soon, the prince became the emperor. Faced with dragons, the Void did not gain the upper hand in the empire. Losa returned to her music and enjoyed a storied career as the Divine's premier musician. Dark moods would still overtake her, and she would spend long hours walking in the wilds. She always returned with a new song. And then there was you. You, Fane, the Eternal Divine. What did you do with your power? What kind of divine were you as the world battled on? Did you show mercy or strength? Did you sacrifice others as Lucian had done? Did you regret becoming divine? Did you wish you had surrendered the power that runs through your veins and sealed the veil? Only you know the truth. Only you know if you atone for your sins.